Hey guys, my name is Ethan, this is Cobra, and welcome to the series where I teach you how to analyze and visualize data in Python. Today we are talking about uh, density, plots, and histograms. So these are two quite complicated uh, graphs, so they've got a video of their own. But ultimately, once you kind of know what they do and know how they work, then there's not a huge amount to them, they're not super complicated. Uh, but it, it's just a little bit of a learning curve really I think with these. Of course if you find this video helpful at any point then consider liking to let me know and subscribing so you don't miss out on future videos in the series. But yeah with that out of the way let's get into it. And so we're right back with it. We're using a brand new dataset, the Revenue 2021 and we're also using um, multiple datasets this time. Uh, so this Revenue 2021, if I bring it up, has a few extra columns. So we have the views, the estimated revenue, the estimated and revenue, gross revenue and the CPM. Um, however, there are also some graphs that I want a more simplified version, so I'm creating a data frame or a second data frame with just the estimated revenue, the estimated ad revenue and the gross revenue just to make certain things a little bit easier. So if we just, uh, sorry, be df 2 head. if we just run all that, like that, we'll see. Yeah, we have the views in the CPM here and we don't have that in here. We also don't have the date either because we're not going to need it where we're going. So the first thing I want to talk about are density plots or kernel density plots or KDE plots. They have kind of a number of different names and they're essentially useful for showing you the density of data in particular regions. So if I create a new graph uh, here, so we have fig equals plt.figure. I have sns.kde plot, um, which is what it's called in this. It's, in, it's important to note as well that matplotlib doesn't actually have um, a function for creating density plots. You have to make it yourself. Uh, and it is possible, I have done it in the past, but it is it is rough. It is real rough. So we're going to set data equals df, and we're going to set our x, because we only need one axis again. And we're going to set it to gross uh, revenue. And I'm going to do fig.show. And control enter. Still don't have my left control key. Uh, but as you can see, we have this little graph here. If I just make that bigger so it's easier to see. And this is telling us that most of our data is around the three marks, so around the three, I can't remember if this is dollars or pounds. Um, I think it's I think it's dollars, but I could be wrong. Uh, so most of the data entries are around the three. You know, you've got a lot of in between about two and a half and four and a bit, or really mainly between three and four. Uh, this density metric, I don't actually know exactly what units this is going in. I think this may just be an arbitrary scale. Um, or maybe it's a percentage, I'm not sure. Uh, but essentially, um, yeah, most of the data, as you can see, is around the three or four mark. Actually, this might be, actually, I might look it up in editing and see if this is a percentage, because this might um, go all the way up to one if, if given a chance, but I don't know for sure. Uh, so I will look that up and, and get back to you. Okay, editing me here, I'm just gonna correct myself real quick, because I was, I was a little bit wrong, and it's a bit too complicated to put as a text in the video. Um, I do recommend if you want to learn more about this to, to do a little bit of Googling uh, just to get a better explanation. I'm going to go over it quite briefly. So the y-axis is not a percentage. What it is is a probability differential and more accurately the kernel density estimate of the probability density function is what I'm reading here. Um, so essentially what that means is that the probability of uh, any given point uh, being between uh, any two other given points is equal to the area under the curve of that particular segment. So for example, if we were to draw a line up from say three uh, vertically up and another one from four vertically up, uh, the possibility of you know any given value uh, being between three and four can be measured as the as the area of this little square thing here. I'll probably try and shade it in an editing. Essentially, if, if you were to calculate the area of the, of the shaded part, that is the probability that any value will be between three and four in our data set. So that's what it means. Hopefully that makes some sort of sense. Uh, you might want to Google it just to, you know, verify that and, and just to make sure you understand it. Uh, but yeah, I'll go back to recording me now. There are a few other things we can do as well, and Seaborn allows us to do some quite cool things with density plots. Uh, so we have a fig, if I just create a new fig, uh, equals plt.figure. Uh, sns.kde plot uh, data equals, and we're going to use df2 for this. 
Um, and if we don't pass in a specific column, it will do all of them uh, at once. And we're also going to pass in a few options to make this look a bit nicer. So we're going to say fill equals true. Uh, so what that will do is it will kind of fill the area under the curve. Um, and we're actually going to leave it at that for now, and I'll go over some extra options later. So fig.show again. And uh, you can see that we have this uh, filled uh, area. It, uh, it gives us a slightly translucent look. I'm not sure if that's just uh, just because there are multiple of them. Uh, but uh, you have the gross revenue, so the curve from before. Oh, yeah, the density is different, so maybe it is slightly different. If you have the same looking gross revenue curve as before, and then the estimated ad revenue, the estimated revenue are, are, are really quite similar. Um, so most of it is around kind of the 175 mark. As far as I can tell, these two kind of get added, and there's, uh, there's some degree of percentage that goes into creating this figure, and that's the one you actually get in the end. I really don't know how the revenue system on YouTube works. But um, yeah, this is just three graphs all superimposed onto each other so you can kind of see multiple densities at one time which is kind of nice but there are a lot of options uh, that you can do with this and i have a list of just uh, some of them here so one is a log scale a equals true so it's false by default but if you have it as a log scale uh, by enabled um, then it looks a bit different <laughs> it's all I can really say. I'm not sure what difference this makes. I've looked at the Seaborn API and I can't really like work out what this is trying to do. I think this is more for distribution purposes. Um, but uh, you'll probably need to do some research on your own. But I just thought I'd let you know that existed, even though I don't quite fully know what that means. Uh, but the rest of it is mainly just um, aesthetics and stuff. So if we get rid of log scale uh, for now, I don't have control. Ah. <laughs> I'm really struggling. Uh, so we have a BW adjust, which we're going to set at 0.5. If we run that, it it changes the it, it changes the smoothness of the curve. So I think the default is one. Uh, yeah, the default is one. Um, but essentially, if we lower it down, it changes. I forget. The, I think it's the covariance or something. But it essentially makes it more specific and, and fine. Uh, so you have, here we can see that, you know, there's a huge amount around three in a bit, and there's a, there's, a, there's a real dip here. But on this one, we can see that that dip doesn't really show itself because it's it smooths it out. And we have this dip here, and we have this huge ramp around four, actually. Um, so it's basically just kind of more specific uh, if you want it to be. Uh, then we've got the multiple, which we're going to set as stack. I believe there are multiple of these, but you know, for the sake of brevity, I'm not going to go over every single one of them. And it basically just changes how it looks. Um, so as you can see, they're now stacked on top of each other rather than um, all separated uh, like they were in the previous graph. Uh, then you've got the cut. Um, which essentially just trims the data down a bit. So you can see if you have a cut to zero, it trims it off there. Uh, if you have a cut at five, I think it trims it, or is it like 0.2? I forget which one it goes. I can't really remember how this actually works. Okay, so I think the the higher the number, the less it cuts off, and then I think 0.5 it cuts off more. I think, yeah. But it essentially just cuts off the, um, the first... Uh, little bit of data, um, essentially. And then you have a cumulative, which you can set to true. And it's basically just kind of keeps it, it going up. So it's it's not, um, well, it's a little bit closer to an, uh, an ECDF graph in a way. So you have uh, just the curve as it goes up and then you have like the density um, increases and then it, Essentially, the density doesn't go back down again. Um, and it's sort of like the amount that's in a particular range. Again, as I say, it's quite similar to an ECDF graph in that respect. So those are all the options I wanted to show off. I'm just going to leave it like this uh, for the repository. But of course, you can experiment with all those different options as much as you please. Uh, we're going to move on to histograms now, because histograms are... Well, there's a lot you can do with histograms. So the basic 
Uh, histogram is something like this. So we're going to create a new figure once again. Then we're going to do sns.histplot. Uh, data equals, we're sticking with the DF2. X equals uh, estimated ad revenue. And then we're going to set the number of bins manually equals 20. Uh, and then we're going to do, oops, and we'll do fig.show. And you don't have to set the number of bins yourself. You can omit this uh, if you want. I, yeah, it will show us a bit less. Um, but if you just have bins equals 20, that gives us a bit more um, specificity is the word I was looking for, uh, uh, for before as well with the with the BW adjust. <clears throat> but this is sort of just like a bar graph. So this is really how you would do a bar graph. It's just have a hist plot with a single axis. Um, and it just gives you like an amount. And it, it, uh, it gives you an amount in a range. Uh, there is something else called a count plot, which works very slightly differently, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, but it does look quite similar to this. Now, but there are even more options that you can pass into a histogram to change it uh, even more. So we're going to just start creating new figures again. Uh, SNS.histplot. Uh, data equals of stick with DF2. And uh, we do element equals uh, step. And then the alpha, we're just going to change more uh, or multiple at once. Uh, although I think the element equals step kind of needs an alpha to look sort of good because it overlaps on top of each other. And this works the same way as the density plot. As, um, if you don't pass a specific axis, it puts them all on there. So you have, you know, the counts that we have in here. I mean, it's pretty much the same as the density graph was given us earlier, just more as a bar graph. So you can see the increased count levels at around three and around four, and you have a little bit up here as well. You can, of course, increase the number of bins here too, should you wish to, uh, to get a bit more specificity like you did uh, with this. You can see that the graphs match up uh, fairly well um, with that regard. Uh, then you get... Uh, you can actually pass uh, KDE equals true, and it returns an, uh, a KDE graph on top of the histogram. So this is a combination of the two things. I don't know if you can pass any arguments into the KDE to change how it looks or to change uh, the BW adjust, for example. But you can overlay the density data with, uh, or, or sorry, on top of the uh, of the histogram data. So you can see the the little bold is here and here. Uh, all match up and everything all matches up here as well. Uh, so that's kind of nice. It keeps going to, I'm sure this is like a new that it scores up to the top. It is really annoying. <laughs> um, you have the log scale the same as before. Uh, so I might as well just sh uh, shut it off real quick. I won't bother zooming in. But yeah, you have the log scale down here. This kind of is changed a bit more. Um, but I still don't really know what that's doing. So it, it, if anyone does know what that's doing, then do let me know. Uh, you also have the same cumulative uh, thing. So again, it works a little bit like an ECDF. And then you have, and you can actually do fill equals false uh, with this one. And it will give you just the outlines, as you can see. But uh, the other thing I haven't talked about yet is the elements. So you do actually get multiple elements. The only two that I remember off the top of my head are step and poly. I think there's only one more. I don't think it really changes much. Uh, but poly gives you, well, a polygon view, really. Um, so it's a little bit closer to the KDE, except it's, it's, it's a bit more angular. Uh, so you can see it's it's similar to this, except it's it's giving us a bit more detail with the, with the actual gradients and the, the specific points. Um, so you can have that if you I can't remember what the other... St I, it might just be the two. I don't remember. I mean, the API is, is always there. I'm just trying to give a bit of an overview. Um, and while I'm actually here, there is actually something that I was going to do in, in, in this graph, which is talk about the stat. So you can get the uh, different stats of things. So you can change what's on the, on the y-axis. So currently, what's on the y-axis is the count. And if we wanted to, we can change that to the frequency. Uh, and this will give us a frequency metric there. I just went back to that because I realized it in my notes that I forgot to talk about it before. Uh, so there is one more histogram I want to talk about. And, is, and that is if you pass in multiple axes because it turns into a heat map uh, if you do that. 
So we have SNS plot data equals df. We're just using the standard df one now. Uh, x equals views and y equals cpm. And then we're going to do fig.show. And as you can see, we have this little heat map area. So this <clears throat> is sort of fairly similar to the scatter in a way, um, except it's obviously just using the bins uh, or the bars, but it's using the bars on both axes now. So it's combining um, uh, both axes and you end up with sort of like a grid. The darker areas indicate that there are more uh, dots in that position and we can actually show that by using a color bar. So we can attach a color bar to it using uh, C bar equals true. Now there are a lot of options you can go to with the, the color bar. I'm not going to uh, really go into that. As you can see it puts a, a color bar on the end here. So here there would be eight, maybe here there'd be one or two, here there'd be, I don't know, maybe about four or five. Um, you can actually verify this again by doing a scatter plot um, of this. So I'm just going to put uh, overlay a scatter plot on top of our of our histogram here. Oh my word! And if I load that up, you see that there are a lot of, of points around here. There are a lot of points around here as well. And yeah, there is only one plot here. There's a plot here and a plot here. One there, one there, one there. Um, but they're all kind of centered around here and yeah the histogram it's more of a of a general overview really of a <clears throat> of a scatter plot once you start going into um, multi-dimensional stuff uh, or, or multiple axes once again there are a number of options you can pass in although I'm only going to show you a few of them here uh, so the first is a thresh. Now this provides a threshold to the minimum value. So you can actually turn it off completely, as you can see I already did um, one attempt of it. But if, if we turn the threshold off completely, then the whole graph is blue. Um, and this indicates, because it's obviously still on the color scale. So we can set the threshold to be 5. Um, and it only shows squares with more than five in there. You can have three. Uh, by default, it's at zero, so it will show you uh, any square with at least one will be uh, will show up. But of course, if you want to turn it off, you can do none, and it will give you a a full color graph. <clears throat> uh, next thing is bins. So again, pretty simple. Uh, just the number of bins uh, per axis. So it, it just gives you a bit more uh, specificity. I like using that word. You put it up to 50, or you can put it down to something like 5, and you get like a just a really generalized version. That looks a lot like a submarine. <laughs> That's very interesting indeed. Um, and then, okay, I did lie. Uh, I'm going to be showing you one thing you can do with the color bar. You can actually set uh, something called a uh, color bar keywords, and you pass in a dict. A value you can just pass in a dict straight up, but if you want to pass it in like a keyword value, this will create a dict where the the key is shrink and the value is 0.75. And what that will do is it will essentially just shrink uh, the size of the color bar down. So we talked about quite a lot in this video. If you have any questions about any of it, then uh, don't be scared to leave a comment down below or you can join the Discord server using the link in the description. But yeah, with that, I'd like to thank my uh, patrons for being as amazing as they are. And I will see you next time where we talk about box plots. So it's a whole video about box plots because there is quite a bit to talk about. So I'll see you for that.